right, we're going to talk angle relationships. In our previous one, we talked about angles, and now we're going to deal with uh, looking at relationships between two angles or three or more. And the first one we want to look at is what's referred to as adjacent angles. And I like to think of adjacent meaning next to. So one way to think of adjacent angle is, or one way to think of adjacent angles is to think of angles that are next to each other. That's kind of the simple definition. Now you're looking at the mathematical definition of it, which uh, gets a little more in depth because just because two angles are next to each other doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be adjacent. So when I look at this, I'm looking for uh, which ones would give me examples of adjacent angles in the pictures here. So when I look at angle one and angle two, I look at those and I say, well, yeah, they're next to each other. So Mr. Rude's kind of simple definition would work. But then I got to get into the the meat of the mathematical definition. Two angles in the same plane. Well, they're on my screen, so they're in the same plane. Next, I'm going to look at, they have a common vertex. Well, angle one's vertex is here, and so is angle two, so that's good. And then last, they have to have a common side. Oops, excuse me, that's not the last thing. They have to have a common side, which they do. I look, there it is. Oops, I wanted to use this color, I guess. And now, the last piece is no common interior points, meaning all the points in one have to just be in angle one, and all the points in angle two have to be in angle two. There's no overlapping there. So when I look at this, angle one and angle two would be an example of adjacent angles. When you move on to, say, angle three and angle four, they're going to satisfy the same plane and they have a common vertex. But when you get here to a common side, that's when it breaks down. Side of angle three, side of angle three, side of angle four, and side of angle four. None of them are common. So this is not an example of adjacent angles. Then when you get to angle five and angle six, well again here, they're in the same plane. Now that's I'm, I'm gonna skip the green one for now go to the common side, they have that. Common vertex, it fails there, because angle five, vertex here, angle six, vertex here. And when you get to the no common interior points, it fails there as well, because all of these points are in angle five, but they're also in angle six, so it has lots and lots of common points. So this one will not work either. The only one that would be, in, of the ones I gave you, would be angle one and angle two, would be our uh, adjacent angles. Come over here to vertical angles. In this one, basically you're looking for an X. And if you have the X, more than likely you're going to get vertical angles. Now, not always. So you come in here and they have to be non-adjacent, so they can't be next to each other, um, and they're formed by intersecting lines. Well. When I look at this, angle one and angle three, those two are non-adjacent, and they're formed by two intersecting lines. So angle one and angle three would be an example of vertical angles. But then I can also look and go the other way in that same picture at angle two and angle four. Same thing's happening. They're non-adjacent, and they're formed by two intersecting lines. So angle two and angle four are also vertical angles. Now you look at my other example, and I'm looking at angle 5, angle 6, angle 7, and angle 8. It's kind of an X, but it's more of that broken X. And I don't care which angles you look at, you'd kind of think maybe 5 and 7. They're not adjacent. However, one side is made by a line in both of them, but the other one, that's not a line. So it doesn't work. And I could look at angle 6 and 8 the same way, and they're not going to be vertical either. So now you, you come into this picture, and you're going to go just by what it looks like. Now remember, going back to our Don't Believe Your Eyes uh, video, that we can't always go by what it looks like. But in this case, when it asks us to go by what it looks like, we will. So we want to name a pair of obtuse vertical angles. So you've got to think obtuse first. My angles need to be greater than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees. And they also have to be vertical. So I'm going to come down into my picture, and I'm going to try to find that. I've got to find a place where I'm going to find two lines that are intersecting. 
So I'm going to look in this area to start. <coughs> well, this angle here is obtuse, and this angle here is obtuse. So I have a pair, and they're vertical angles, so I just found one. So now to name my two angles, I'm going to have angle B, D, E, or I could use I could use F there, call it angle B, D, F, and angle, now I'm going to look at the one on the kind of the right, that would be angle C, D, G. Now this is one of those places where there's some confusion here, so we can't just call it angle D. If you were to call it angle D, there's multiple angles you could be looking at. Maybe it's go like this. Angle D could be this one, it could be this one, it could be this one, and it could be this one. So this is one of those situations where you can't go with the shortcut of just using the vertex to name the angle. So there's one example. Um, you could also come down in here. This one gets a little harder because when I look at that, those angles almost look like they're right angles. Probably would say this angle and this angle would be the obtuse ones. So if we went that route, then you'd call it angle a E F and angle I could go with angle D E G. Those are the two that probably look up to and that's a trickier one to, to go with. I like my green example better because it's obvious that they're obtuse I think. Linear pair. This one I like to see. I see line and I see pair. Well this lesson's all on angles so I think I'm going to have to have a pair of angles that makes a line. That's my definition. So when I look at that, a pair of adjacent angles, so they have to be next to each other using my simple definitions, whose non-common sides are opposite rays, or they form a line. And again, I go with that whole two angles that make a line. So I come up here and I look at angle one and angle two. My simple definition, yeah, they're making, they're making a line. But if I go back to the, the mathematical definition, pair of adjacent angles, well, they share a vertex and they share a side. They're adjacent angles. Um, they don't have any points in common and they're on the same plane. I should go through all of it. Um, and they're non-common sides. Well, that part, non-common sides are opposite rays. So this side of angle one and this side of angle two are the non-common sides, the ones they're not sharing, they're forming opposite rays or a line. Therefore, angle one and angle two would work. If I get it over into this picture with angle three, angle four, and angle five, I look at that real quickly and I say, I don't see a line anywhere in there. I see a bunch of rays. Therefore, I'm not going to have a linear pair. But my next one here, now there's lots of possibilities. If I look at angle seven and angle six, that would form a linear pair kind of cut off the bottom part and it looks just like angle one and angle two. So why don't I put all these in here? We had angle one and angle two already. We just looked at angle six and angle seven. I could also go with angle six and angle nine. You could keep going. We could also look at angle eight and angle nine. That makes a linear pair. Angle seven and angle eight also makes a linear pair. I didn't write them all down, but I think you get the idea of what a linear pair is. And if you don't, let me know and I can help you out with it. Complementary angles. These are the ones that say nice things about each other. It's a little math humor for those of you that didn't get it. But, uh, got them back. Complementary angles are going to be two angles whose measures have a sum of 90 degrees. So we actually have to be able to look at the measures of the two angles, add them together if it's 90 degrees, they're complementary. My picture, I said, well, which angles are complementary? I'm going to start with the blue and call it the orange angle, angle K and angle J. If I take 35 and 55 and add those two numbers together, I get 90 degrees. Therefore, angle K, oops, that's a funny looking K, and angle J are complementary angles. Now, when you come over to angle 1 and angle 2, it doesn't tell you exact measures. But notice it did put in the right angle symbol here. Therefore, I know that if I take the red ray and the green ray together, I have 90 degree angle. Well, that means that angle one and angle two put together 
it's going to come up to be 90 degrees. Therefore, angle 1 and angle 2 are also complementary angles. Now, to help you out later, you're going to need to be able to write equations dealing with complementary angles. Well, the sum of them has to be 90 degrees. Well, I think sum, that tells me to add, and is 90, is equals means is a lot of times in math, 90. Well, now I just have my two angles here. I'm going to call one of my angles x and one of my angles y. If you don't like x and y, you can throw in any variables you want there. But there would kind of be a general equation to model complementary angles. Supplementary, very similar to complementary. However, in this case, now the two measures have to add up to 180 degrees. And again, which ones are supplementary in my picture? Um, I'm going to start with angle R and angle T. Add them together, it's 180 degrees. Therefore, angle R and angle T are supplementary angles. And then I come over to angle 1 and angle 2. Well, I notice if I just ignore this part for the time being, I have a straight angle here. The measure of a straight angle is 180 degrees. Therefore, when I take angle 1 and angle 2 and put them together, they're going to have to be supplementary. So there's another example of supplementary angles, even without the actual measures of the two angles. General equation here. Well, again, if you go back to the definition, the sum, so I have to add something, and is 180 degrees. Well, the sum of two angles, call it whatever you want. I'm just going to go with x and y again. So I can take my two angles, x and y, add them together, and it's going to equal 180. I guess if you want to get real technical.